Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at how to create a script card for the Chaos Bolt spell from D&D 5th Edition. When all is said and done, we'll have a script card that allows us to choose what level we're casting at, rolls our attack, rolls the two d8s that we need, and compares them to see if they match. If they don't, it prompts us to choose what type of damage we're using, and if they do match, it'll actually roll our attacks again and continue doing that every time the two d8s match. Note that because we're using mods in order to do this, a pro account will be required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So let's recap real quick on what Chaos Bolt actually does. You start out by making a ranged spell attack roll, and then you roll 2d8. And you pick one of those d8s, and the number on that d8 determines the type of damage that the spell is dealing, whether it's fire, lightning, force, or something else. And then, if the numbers on your 2d8 match, the spell fires again, and you get to make a new attack roll against a new target within 30 feet of your original target. And then you repeat this process. You roll the 2d8, if they match, you get to make another attack against another target within 30 feet of that target you just hit, and so on and so forth. So this spell can continue to fire every time the 2d8s match. The challenge here is that as it appears on the regular character sheet, the Chaos Bolt spell lets you choose what level you're casting at, and it displays what your attack roll is, but then the damage is all summed up in a single number. You have to hover over the number to see what you rolled on your d8s, and then you you have to click show spell description to know what number corresponds to what damage type. And this puts a lot of information into chat and it kind of slows gameplay down because if the numbers do match, then you need to click the cast button again and then repeat this process. So what our script card is going to do is it's going to spell out all the information for us and we're going to see what our attack roll was, what our d8s were, and then we'll be able to see exactly what type of damage we can choose from and if the numbers do match on those d8s, it will automatically fire the attack roll again for us. So, let's see how we set that up. So, the first thing we're going to do is go into the mods for our game and make sure that we've got script cards installed. Script cards comes to us from Kurt Jagers. Kurt, thank you for everything you do for the community. And once you've got this mod installed, we're ready to start setting up our Chaos Bolt. Alright, so let's start writing the code for our script card. We're going to start out here by typing in exclamation point script and then two open curly braces, and then we'll put in two closing curly braces. Everything between these two sets of curly braces is what makes up the script card. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put in this line right here, title Chaos Bolt. That's what's going to give us this text up here. Now what we want to do is put in our range and our cast message that you see in the subheading here. So to put in the range, it's going to look like this, where we say left sub range 120 feet. And then what we want to do is figure out what level the spell is being cast at. And if you remember, that's where we click the button and we get prompted asking what level are we casting at. So to do that, we're going to put in a prompt like this one where we ask what level are you casting at and we're going to store whatever number that the player clicked in this variable here called spell level. And then we're going to use that in other lines. And the first one of those lines is this one right here where we put in what shows up on the right side of the heading here, where right sub is cast at level and then spell level. And this bracket dollar sign notation is how we refer to a variable after it's been created. So we've put in the range, we put in the title, we put in what level we're casting at. Now let's go ahead and let's make our attack roll. So our attack roll is going to look like this where we have our attack being set to 1d20 plus our character's spell attack bonus. And we're making this macro for this character right here, Amalda Gamwich, so I've just put in the ampersand notation to refer to her spell attack bonus. If you're ever not sure about where to find something like that, what you can do is, is just alt double click to open up the character sheet. And then if you go to the attributes and abilities section, all of the attributes are listed here on the left hand side of the screen. You can scroll through here and you can find your bonuses for various skills and your spell attack bonuses. Now, looking through this list is challenging because it's not alphabetized. So what you can do is press this button right here to pop it out. And then you can actually use control F on your keyboard to search for something. So spell attack bonus. There it is, spell attack bonus is called three, and this is the actual name of the attribute right here. Okay, so I've got that. So our attack roll is going to consist of Amalda's spell attack bonus plus a d20. And then what we want to do is actually display that attack roll in chat, like we've done right here. 
And that's going to be done with a line that looks like this, where we have our attack roll message. And then again, bracket, dollar sign, and the name of the variable, which in this case is ATK. Okay, so now what we want to do is roll those D8s. And the D8 rolls are going to look like this, where I say, okay, die 1 is equal to 1 D8, and die 2 is equal to a different D8. And then we want to put that out into chat like we've done in the script card. So we want to display the D8 1 roll and the D8 2 roll. So that's going to look like this, where we say D8 1 roll is the value from die 1, and D8 2 roll is the value from die 2. Now if we jump back to the spell's description, we also see that the target is going to take those 2 D8 plus 1 D6 of damage. And at higher levels, that amount of D6s increases by one for each slot above first level. So let's take care of the D6s now. So what I'm gonna do is put in a line that looks like this. So we get a new variable here that says equal D6 damage, which is equal to the spell level worth of D6s. So if we selected one in the prompt up here, we're gonna roll one D6. If we selected level two, then we're gonna roll two D6. And then finally, we wanna add up all those dice together to give us our total damage. And that's going to look like this, where we say dash dash equals DMG for damage. That is our new damage variable. And that's going to be equal to die 1 plus die 2 plus the D6 damage. And then we want to output that information into the script card, like you see here, where we have our D6 roll being displayed and then the total amount of damage. And that's going to look like this, where we have D6 roll being displayed with the D6 damage variable and damage, which is the sum of all of our damage dice. So now what we want to do is display the damage types that the caster can choose from based on what they rolled on the D8s. And we're going to do that with two lines of code that look like this. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. And this is going to look a little daunting, but stick with me, folks. So what we're doing here is this dash dash C line is called a case statement. This allows us to take a variable and test it against multiple conditions. So what I'm saying here is, Look at die one. If we rolled a one on die one, then we're gonna create a new variable called damage type one. And we're gonna set that damage type one variable to acid because in the spell, the damage type is acid when you roll a one on a D8. And then you roll a two, you get cold, three, you get fire and so on. And so that's what's happening here. If we roll a two, then we're taking that damage type variable and we're setting it to cold. If we rolled a three, we're taking the damage type variable and we're setting it to fire and so on, right down the line all the way up through thunder. And then we do the exact same thing for die two, except what we're doing now is creating a new damage variable called damage type two. And so it's the same process here. You just copy paste this line and change damage type one to damage type two and you're good to go. So now based on our die rolls, we'll know what type of damage that we're actually dealing. So now what we wanna do is compare if our D8s are the same or not. And then if they are not the same, we wanna display a message in the script card saying, choose damage type one or damage type two. That's gonna be done with code that looks like this, where we have this dash dash question mark. This is a conditional statement. And what we're checking here is if die one dash n e means not equal to die two, then we're gonna do everything on the other side of this pipe, starting at this open square brace and ending at this closing square brace and pipe. And basically what's gonna happen here is if they don't match, we display damage type, choose damage type one or damage type two, just like what you see here in the script card. If they do match, then we put in an else clause, which looks like this, where we have another open square bracket and then another closing square bracket and pipe down here. And what we're gonna say here is the damage type is damage type one because they're the same thing, right? If they match on the D8s, then you're dealing whatever type of damage that was. And then we also wanna put a message out saying that the D8s match and that the chaos energy leaps to a new target within 30 feet of the original target. And these open bracket C closing bracket and then the open slash C here, this is basically saying center this text in the script card. And so this is saying start centering here and end centering here. So everything in between these two C tags is going to be centered in the script card's output. So now you might be thinking, well, okay, Nick, at this point, we need to have the script card make a new attack roll for a new target. How do we go about doing that? Well, I'm about to show you. So what I'm gonna do is start out by adding in this line right here. I'm gonna create something called attack branch. 
And then I'm going to come down here to the end of our last conditional statement, and I'm going to add in this line. And then what I'm going to do is select everything in between that new line and the attack branch line here and indent that just for readability's sake. So you may be wondering, all right, Nick, what the heck did we just do here? Well, essentially what we just did was turned all of this into a reusable piece of code called a branch. And our branch's name is the attack branch. So what we do now is we can call the attack branch with a line that looks like this. And so what's being said here is we display our title, we get our spell level, and then we call the attack branch. So we jump down in the script card to this marker. This is a branch marker. We're saying go to attack branch and then do everything inside the attack branch. And this line indicates when the attack branch is done. And when it's done, we jump back up to this point in the script card. So we're going to jump down to attack branch, do its stuff, and then return back up here to line six. Once we're done with the attack, we're gonna say dash dash X, and that means we are done with the script card. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna execute the attack branch, and then we're done with the script card. Okay, but how does that help us with the rerolls? Well, here's the cool thing. A branch can call itself. So we come down here into attack branch, we do all this wonderful stuff, and then we get to the point where the two D8s match. So after we display that the D8s match and that the chaos energy has jumped to a new target, we add another line calling the attack branch. So the D8s match, we loop. We'd say, okay, go up to attack branch again. We jump up here, we do all this stuff. Do the D8s match again? Yes, great, call the attack branch again. And then lather, rinse, and repeat until the D8s don't match anymore. So let's go ahead, let's test this out. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. Let's throw it into chat and minimize this guy because we're getting prompted. What level are we casting at? Level one. Ooh, wow, look at that. Okay, so our attack roll was a nine. We probably missed with that, but our D8s were the same. We got force damage here. The D8s match, chaos energy leaps to a new target. Attack roll, hey, we rolled a nat 20. The D8s match again. We got cold. We see that that matched. New attack roll. These don't match. Choose cold or psychic. So the card is working properly, and this is now taking care of all the rolls for us all at once with just one execution. We don't need to go back and check to see what kind of damage that we're dealing as a result of our D8 rolls. We don't need to continuously re-roll the attacks and then check, did they match, did they not? Everything is being calculated for us automatically. So that makes gameplay go much faster when you cast Chaos Bolt. Now there is one last tweak that I want to make to this, and that is what happens when you roll a nat 20. We should have extra dice being rolled as a result of that. So let's put that calculation into the script card too. So what we're going to do is come here to right after we roll the d8s, and we're going to put in another conditional statement. And we're going to say if attack base, that is the base roll, which is just the d20, equals 20. So if we rolled a nat 20 on this, then we're going to do everything inside of this square bracket up to this square bracket and this pipe. And what we're gonna say then is our D6 damage will be equal to the number of D6 that we checked for our spell level plus another set of D6s. So because we're rolling double the dice on a nat 20. And then our overall damage becomes die one plus die two plus two more D8 plus our D6 damage. And then down here, we're gonna put in our else clause and we're just gonna wrap the original D6 damage here that we were doing in that else clause. So we'll come down here, we'll put in that. And now what's gonna happen is if we have a nat 20, we run this bit of code. If we don't get a nat 20, then it's just the regular number of D6s and then die one plus die two plus the D6s for the overall damage. So there you have it. That's how you can create a script card for the Chaos Bolt spell in D&D 5th edition. I hope you found this video helpful if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.